The most surprising thing from the Apple events is the Mac Studio, which is an entirely new Mac. So here are not five, not 10, but 20 things you need to know about it. Number one, this is technically the Mac Mini Pro that we've seen leaked and talked about only with a brand new name, Mac Studio. And that's because it brings way more to the table than the Mac Mini Pro was rumored to bring. Number two, from above, it literally has the exact same footprint as the Mac Mini. That's why it is basically the Mac Mini Pro, but it is taller, so 9.7 centimeters compared to 3.6, essentially like having two and a half M1 Mac Minis on top of each other. Number three, for some reason, Apple still kept the Intel Mac Mini around, which they're still selling for $1,100, which is outrageous. I believe it's only there because of the two extra thermal ports that it offers. So that's great for connectivity, but not so great in terms of performance. I think that once the M2 Mac Mini launches uh, with that rumored design with multiple colors, I do see the Intel model being discontinued as the M2 model is rumored to have four Thunderbolt ports as well. Number four, this new Mac Studio has more connectivity than any other Mac before it, aside from the Mac Pro. So on the back, uh, it looks almost the same as the Intel Mac Mini. So we have four Thunderbolt 4 ports. We have one 10 gigabit ethernet port. We have two USB type A ports, five gigabit per second each, one HDMI port, and one headphone jack. This is already expensive enough, but on the front, we have a couple more ports. So we have two USB-C ports and one SD card slot, which is a UHS-2 slot. And not only that, but those two USB-C ports on the front, if you buy the M1 Ultra version of the Mac Studio, they would actually be Thunderbolt four ports instead, thanks to the extra bandwidth of that chip. Number five, just like the new MacBook Pros, we also have a high impedance headphone jack, meaning that if you connect studio monitoring speakers or headphones that need more power to perform at their best, the Mac Studio can deliver that. It won't be quite as good as a dedicated preamp, but much better than a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Number six, the external display support is just insane with the Mac Studio. So you can connect four Pro Display XDR monitors, so that's four 6K displays using those four Thunderbolt ports, and then one extra 4K display using the HDMI port. And that's no matter which configuration of the Mac Studio you get. And fun fact, if you use some adapters and you connect, let's say, 1080p monitors, you can actually connect as many as 44 monitors to the Mac Studio. Someone should definitely give this a try. Number seven, the HDMI port is only 2.0, meaning that it is limited to 4K 60 instead of 4K 120 or 8K. So it's not really the end of the world because you can use those Thunderbolt ports to get 4K 120 and higher, but you will have to use one of them to be able to achieve that. Number eight, we also have some wireless limitations. So we only have Bluetooth 5.0 instead of 5.2, which was released in January of 2020. And we only have Wi-Fi 6 instead of Wi-Fi 6E, which was also released in 2020. This is so weird. Apple's actually doing the exact same thing with the MacBook Pros. So I'm not really sure why they are not using the latest standards here. Number nine, the new Mac Studio has a speaker as well. The Mac Mini had one too. It was pretty poor. Uh, I do expect this one to be better because of the larger chassis. Apple's not really claiming uh, it to have like six speakers or woofers or anything like that. So I don't think it's gonna be anything special. It's just one of those things that, you know, is good to have. Number 10, Apple actually claims that its new Mac Studio is the replacement for the 27 inch iMac. They compared its performance quite a lot against it. They even said that it's great for anyone who's upgrading from the 27 inch iMac. Plus they also discontinued that 27 inch iMac. And that's such a shame because the cheapest iMac replacement, so to say, uh, would be the base Mac mini studio, which is $2,000 plus the studio display, which is 1600 plus 300 for the keyboard and the mouse. And you get to a total of 3,900. The base 27-inch iMac from before started at $1,800, less than half the price. The Mac Mini Studio is way more powerful, although significantly more expensive. 11, Apple's also considering this a Mac Pro replacement, especially the M1 Ultra version of it. They're still selling the Mac Pro for $6,000 compared to $4,000, which is what the M1 Ultra variant of the Mac Studio starts from. The Mac Studio offers you much better performance in a significantly smaller device, which is also way more power efficient. Number 12, let's talk about the actual performance. So you have two different chip variants inside the Mac Studio. 
the M1 Max, which is the same one as in the new MacBook Pros, and then the M1 Ultra, which is a brand new chip, which is made out of two M1 Max chips combined. And the thing is that even the M1 Max variant is 2.5 times faster than the highest end 10 core i9 27 inch iMac and 50% faster than the 16 core Xeon Mac Pro. The M1 Ultra is 3.8 times faster than the highest end iMac and 60% faster than the fastest maxed out 28 core Xeon Mac Pro. A Geekbench score has also been leaked and we get almost 1800 in the single core performance and 24,000 in multi-core. This actually defeats Intel's highest end i9 1200K desktop chip in multi-core by a significant margin. 13, the GPU performance is also incredible. So the M1 Max variant is 3.4 times faster than the highest end iMac with the Radeon Pro 5700 XT and also 3.4 times faster than the Mac Pro with the Radeon Pro W5700X. The M1 Ultra is 4.5 times faster than the maxed out iMac and 80% faster than the fastest GPU that you can get inside the Mac Pro, the Radeon Pro W6900X. And according to Apple, it is also more powerful than an RTX 3090 while consuming 200 watts less power. Then number 14, with Apple Silicon, RAM also acts as video memory. And you can get up to 128 gigabytes of memory, so up to 128 gigabytes of video memory, which is more than any desktop GPU on the market right now. 15, since the M1 Ultra is essentially two M1 Max chips, you also get double the video encode and decode engines. So in that case, you get two video decode engines, you get four video encode engines, you get four ProRes encode and four ProRes decode engines. Now, the thing is that the M1 Max already had double the media engines compared to the M1 Pro, and we did actually see a reduction in almost half in terms of the video export time uh, from the M1 Pro to the M1 Max. And the M1 Ultra should be the same. With the M1 Max, we actually brought down our video export times from almost 30 minutes to about 10 minutes or even less. So technically with the M1 Ultra, we could bring that down to like five minutes or even less than that, which is just nuts. 16, there is actually a bin version of the M1 Ultra, uh, which still has a 20 core CPU, but a 48 core GPU. Essentially, this is made out of two already bin versions of the M1 Max chips, the ones with 24 GPU cores. We've ordered three Mac Studios already, and we'll have some benchmarks really soon, so make sure to subscribe to see those. 17, we have the energy consumption, which according to Apple is extremely low. It is uh, less than 1000 kilowatt hours per year than a comparable high-end desktop PC. In total, this can actually save you around 200 pounds per year here in the UK. 18, probably my favorite thing about the Mac Studio is just how portable it is. Like, you can literally put it in your backpack and travel with a super high-end desktop PC with ease. 19, we also get some new accessories. There's a new keyboard, a new trackpad, and the new Magic Mouse, which come in silver and black now. now. This is the same as the exclusive Mac Pro accessories, but you can now buy these individually, and they also have the updated rounded shape and the Touch ID button. Another new accessory is the Apple Studio display, which pairs really well with the new Mac Studio. We've actually done a separate video on that in case you want to learn a couple of things about it. And 20, the Mac Studio is such an amazing deal, especially the baseline model, which starts from $2,000, which is the same price as the 14-inch MacBook Pro, but you get a 10-core CPU versus an 8-core, you get a 24-core GPU versus a 14-core, you get uh, more video and code engines, double actually, you get 32 gigabytes of RAM versus 16, and a lot more connectivity. Of course, that you do need to bring your own keyboard, mouse, and monitor, but if you already have those and you simply need the best possible performance, performance without spending loads, then the Mac Studio is the one to get. Like I said, we ordered three models and we'll have plenty of benchmarks coming soon, as detailed as the previous one in case you missed it, where we actually built our very own tool that would run the benchmarks automatically. So yeah, let us know which devices you want to see compared against the uh, uh, Mac Studio. And yeah, definitely subscribe to see those as soon as they come out. I'm Daniel, this means Enough Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. It's Enough Tech, signing out. Cheers.